Hi everyone, I'm Yulia from Expressia. We at Expressia are a team of people passionate about helping others create better experiences. We have an online customer journey mapping platform where you can build data-rich and design quality customer journey maps and make your personas come alive. And do that all with your teammates in real time. Our consulting team conducts public and corporate workshops to educate companies and individuals. We've also got Expressia Academy that has interactive courses on mapping personas and interviews. And of course, our free community events. Today, we're going to explore the truth behind personas. We'll be talking about different types of audience segmentation, how to use personas and debunk some myth around them. Get ready to take notes or even sketch. There will be a lot of valuable information. Our today's expert has organized hundreds of corporate trainings and workshops about customer journey mapping, jobs to be done, empathy mapping, and other aspects of managing customer experience. Now he wears two hats being a consultant and a chief product officer at Expression Academy. Without further ado, welcome everyone, Nick Yefimov. Hi everyone. So before we start, uh, just a couple of words about myself and why I have the right to talk about personas today. Uh, I've spent many years in the field of human-centered design, being a UX designer, a field, a field researcher, and a head of user experience. Also been a consultant for more than six years at Expression and by, my, by myself. I helped different companies to change their mindset and become more human-centric. I also teach people uh, about customer segmentation based on behavioral attributes, and here at Expressure, we designed a corporate and open uh, program about such segmentation and personas. And also I took part in creation of personas fundamentals course, course uh, here at Express Academy, our interactive learning platform. And these courses have been recognized by many professionals and integrated in different educational programs, for example, uh, Miami University uses our courses as a part of their educational programs. So uh, all these um, all these years, I faced with a need to, to to cluster target audience and somehow describe such such clusters such, such groups. Because you know our goals as a people who are involved in the product and service creation. Uh, always be able to answer a question who are we building a product or a service for yeah because uh, a deep understanding of a target audience is let's say fundamental to creating exceptional products or services and today we will talk about personas about some let's say pitfalls that cause our personas to fail and what you must keep in mind before you start your next personas initiative so uh, before we start, before we, before we start, let's get acquainted a little bit. So uh, could you answer a couple of questions about about yourself? So just just try to answer in, in our chat. Yeah. So the first question: How familiar are you with the concept of personas? Just type the the, the number, yeah, like one for just heard about it or five for constantly use at work. So what's your experience? Mm-hmm, thanks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, a lot of experience, guys, today. Mm-hmm, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. So thank you, thank you so much. Uh, the next question is uh, uh, is uh, what best describes your role? So just type your uh, just type in a number which best describes your role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So a lot of UX or custom user experience or customer experience professionals today and uh, a lot of other people. Yeah, so I hope other people will find some useful information to today. So uh, the last, the last, uh, the last question. So just, just use green uh, check mark or red cross to, to answer 
have you ever tried to, to sell the idea uh, of personas to other people, your team, your client, your boss, something like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So 10 people who tried to, to sell the idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. So um, thanks a lot. I know a bit better now about you. So let's back to, 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 to the talk itself. So what this talk will cover, I mean, what, what, what kind of myths and misconceptions we will talk about. First of all, why you must always understand the, the goal behind personas, uh, what kind of personas you create, you can create, and how you can use these personas uh, to get some some value, yeah. So let's first put everyone on the same page about uh, what personas are, because there are so many different meanings uh, that lead to different, let's say, understanding of the the core idea behind personas. So uh, for me, personas uh, are fictional yet realistic representations and let's say generalizations of a cluster or group of your target audience uh, who exhibit similar attitudes. Uh, goals and behaviors in relation to your product or service. So a persona is an archetype instead of instead of an actual living human. Yeah, but personas should be described as if they were real people. Yeah. So let's think of them as a human human-like snapshots. Yeah, of, of relevant and meaningful commonalities in your customer segments. So here are some examples of different personas. Uh, just to be sure that we are talking about the same technique. Yeah. As you can see, they can they they can look different and at the same time be valuable. Yeah. So, what's the 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 most important part in persona creation process? So, before you will start describing such representatives, yeah, you must you must understand the goal behind personas. So, why do you need personas? What goals are you trying to accomplish? What are you going to do with these personas after creation? Uh, now, what, uh, based on my experience, this is a major reason behind personas failure. So often people use, let's say, the wrong tool for their needs and they want to use or reuse personas created for a very different purposes. So it's uh, as if we, if we are trying to put a square peg in the, in the round hole. Yeah, you can do that with a hammer, uh, but that's not how it's supposed to be. Yeah? And uh, you, you can't just create personas without first deciding what they are for and what, what the scope of their, uh, let's say, influences should be. Personas are not a one size fits all tool, yeah. They should be used with a specific, well-defined goal in mind. And to make them useful, the data, I, I mean, data captured in a, in a persona, should should reflect the, the goal for what the persona and the scope of work is meant to impact. Uh, there is a great article from Nielsen Norman Group about how to choose the scope of your personas. It states that personas can have different scope, a broad or narrow one. So imagine a financial company which has many different digital and non-digital services. Uh, services and products yeah for their customers this company can have several completely different sets of personas for their goals so the company could have personas with a let's say broad scope yeah to describe the company's customers and to influence multiple areas of the business with several products yeah and the company at the same time could also have a narrow scope personas to for example guide the redesign of its mobile banking app for for corporate clients yeah and these personas would have narrow focus because they would influence only one part of, of, of business yeah so as you can imagine it's it's really useless to use broad scope personas for some specific task like mobile banking redesigning and and of course vice versa yeah so what happens most of times, uh, based on my experience, is that a stakeholder 
a client, a manager, asks specialists to create personas, and they they simply don't give them any direction about the purpose or goal behind these personas. And to those who are uh, not so experienced in how personas are created, it often seems like uh, it's, it's, it's a great idea to have one set of personas that can be used for any future project, yeah. Uh, this approach seems to make sense because you get the, let's say, the most bang for your buck and your customers and users will be the same for any current of future projects. So the same personas should be relevant for everything, right? Uh, unfortunately, no. Yeah, it doesn't quite work like that. Uh, you should remember some basic rules. So the broader the scope, the shallower the data supporting these personas. And the smaller the scope, the richer the data. Yeah. So you could you, you can read more on how selected scope affects persona in this article mentioned before. Uh, I won't uh, dive into the details now, but uh, what what I want to to talk about uh, is, you know, probably you're wondering now what's what's the right way to structure the personas for my company. Should we have personas for the whole company for each product or service? Uh, actually, you can have a different set of personas at each of these levels if you want to influence uh, decisions making at that level. Yeah. However, however, you don't have to have personas at each level, yeah? So the need for personas should be situational. So uh, remember that context and goals drive segmentation. Yeah, you should, you should gather the relevant insights for your context and goal, and then look for groups for similar people within that specific context, yeah? So the resulting personas that represent these clusters will apply only to, to that context, yeah. Uh, so always ask yourself and your stakeholders what the goal for personas is, yeah. So just, just a quick question for you, type your answer in our chat. How many different sets of personas do you have for your, for your product or service or in, within your company? How many different sets? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 70. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in, in some cases, Conditional, mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you. To, to let's sum this part, yeah. Uh, the truth here is that you must understand the goal behind personas and what the scope of their influences should be. To have relevant data for decision making, it's let's say ideal to have uh, a set of personas to influence a specific, mm, let's say, design challenge. Yeah, these these personas ensure that you collect data for your specific research question and that you find, let's say, themes in the user behaviors and which is related to that context, yeah. So uh, let's get back to what personas are and how we can create them, yeah. As we discussed before, personas are a representation, you know, of a cluster or segment of your target audience. So before describing your target audience, you must understand the differences between your target audience. You must somehow split your target audience into different clusters or groups and so on. So um, that's, from my experience, the second major problem that people face when trying to create personas. They simply, let's say, don't know how to create these clusters or what's the difference between segmentation techniques. And it's, it's okay to use different techniques for different purposes. Uh, trying to create personas for marketing goals, it's okay to split your audience based on your demographics and consumer behavior. And you will end up with marketing personas, but never use them for user experience or customer experience improvements. So a uh, question 
for you. Uh, use green check mark and red cross. Were you familiar with marketing segmentation before this presentation? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can use these buttons. You can type, uh, you can write your answer in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thanks. And uh, next question, have you ever tried to create marketing personas? Those who were familiar with them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, thanks, thanks. Uh, uh, so that's the, the first technique, uh, yeah, segmentation technique. So you can uh, cluster your target audience based on demographics and consumer behavior. And in this case, you will end up with marketing personas. Uh, but what if you want to improve your service, yeah, or product uh, in terms of, let's say, customer experience, if you want to create something new to understand user behavior, yeah. So uh, in this case, you must use uh, segmentation based on behavioral attributes, and you will end up with personas with focus on needs, goals, pain points, behavior, etc., etc. But never mix these techniques, yeah. So marketing personas are not an extension to behavior or design personas and vice versa. They are used for different purposes. So one more question for you. Uh, were you familiar with segmentation based on behavioral attributes before this, this presentation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, thank you. So one more question. Have you ever tried to create behavior or let's say design of classic classic personas? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the last the last one question. Have you ever tried to use marketing personas for user experience or customer experience purposes? So vice versa. So have you ever tried to Mix them. Mm -hmm. Different. Mm -hmm. Different opinions. Okay. And different experience. So thank you. And if you are a fan of, for example, jobs to be done, you can use this theory as a basis for segmentation. I mean, uh, you can cluster your target audience based on, on, on jobs. Yeah. And you can build corresponding personas with a focus on GTBD related things like desired outcomes, better life description, and so on and so forth. So once again, if you don't know your segments, if you don't know your, your, your customers, groups of customers, how can you describe a typical representative? Yeah, I mean, how you can build personas without such a knowledge. So as a quick recap of this part, uh, you must somehow split or cluster your target audience before creating personas. So at least you must understand the, the, the differences between your clusters to, to describe them, uh, clusters, I mean, in the form of personas. Uh, keep your initial goal in mind and never mix different types of segmentation because they, it will lead to unpredictable results when you try to mix uh, marketing segmentation and uh, classic or behavior personas. So let's move to our next big topic and myth. Uh, we all know that personas must be built based on research data, based on segmentation, yeah. Otherwise we will evolve our product or service, keeping in mind some, let's say, imaginary users, yeah, some hallucinations about our, our target audience. But what if we want to prepare for the research or what if you want to brainstorm together with your team about your users. Is it allowed to create personas in that case? Is it, is it like a chicken or egg dilemma, yeah? What should come first? Hypothesis about users, about clusters and research, or personas based on research? The truth is that you can create proto-personas uh, and like let's say personas based on your assumptions before research but uh, please call them proto-personas or bullshit personas because they are 
built on your hypothesis. Yeah. So prod personas are a lightweight form of, let's say, ad hoc personas created uh, with no research and based on assumptions. Uh, they, uh, they catalog the team's existing knowledge or best guesses of who their users are and what they want. So proto personas can be based on existing user data if your team has any, but in, make, in, in many cases, uh, they are based solely on the, on the team's assumptions about who the users are and what they need. So proto personas can help you, uh, so the, here is an example yeah, of some product personas. Uh, you, you, you try to, to, to make them as rough or sketch as possible. This will help you to make uh, your hypothesis clear and explicit, but will eliminate the, the, the risk to stick to such personas. You, won't, you will not spend much time creating them, so it will be easier for you to throw away them later after conducting some research. So add some sketch to your personas, uh, not a real photo, yeah? Add minimal valuable information without spending time on details. Uh, so don't spend time. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can use proto personas and proto personas can help you to, for example, involve other teammates in the personas technique, yeah? To show the essence of personas to your team, clients, stakeholders, and so on. And normally every team member has uh, different assumptions about typical users. And the lack of alignment means that each person makes decisions on behalf of a different, let's say, intended audience, yeah. So proto personas provide at least some shared direction, even if the results don't, do not accurately capture the real users. Uh, uh, Product personas also can help you to get initial knowledge about your target audience from your team of stakeholders, clients, and so on, to learn what you didn't know before. And also it uh, can help you to kickstart your research by making some hypothesis clear, yeah, explicit uh, about your target audience, I mean, and by helping you to prepare for research prayer questions, find the right participants, and so on and so forth. So, uh, as I said before, the main rule for creating persona is to make them as rough as possible. So don't spend time formatting, formatting your text if you are using some digital tool. Use this KISS principle, yeah, keep it short and simple. So, uh, obviously, as product personas are not driven by research, they are often an inaccurate, inaccurate uh, representation of your users and can be an echo chamber for the team's incorrect assumptions. Uh, moreover, if the team finds little value in these personas, this can lead to a negative hello effect yeah, towards personas in general yeah, and towards other different user experience or customer experience activities. So keep in mind these downside effects using product personas. So a quick question for you. Uh, were you familiar with product personas before this presentation? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of people were familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And uh, one more question. Uh, have you ever tried to create product personas? for your product, for your service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you. To, to, to sum it up, uh, the truth here is that you can create personas before research, yeah, to help you to, to prepare for such research. But uh, please create product personas, a sketch draft version of your personas and throw them away, uh, away after research, or keep in mind that these, these are only your hallucinations about your users, yeah, and not the real data, the, they are not the real representations of your customers. Yeah. So as we discussed before, we must keep in mind our goals when we decide to build personas.
This will help us to understand the scope of personas and uh, let's say the level of details. But what if we have different stakeholders for such initiative? Uh, what if we have different usage scenarios for our personas, even if we, if we clearly understand the scope of personas? And it's okay to have different versions of the same persona for different cases. So let's imagine that you want to share your research findings with your team or clients. Yeah. So based on your goals, you can tune the level of the details that your personas have, but these personas will have lots of details anyway. Yeah. Or let's imagine that you want to take such personas with you for every meeting about your product or service that help you and your team or client always keep focus on your users. Uh, in this case, you can prepare a shorter version of personas comparing to the previous one, yeah. Or let's imagine that you want to, to hold several, or at least one, yeah, ideation sessions on how you can improve your product or service. In this case, well-detailed personas is what you need, yeah, because you will need a lot of details to help you generate ideas. Or let's imagine that you want to use personas as an, let's say, assistance to sell your ideas to your boss or client or other stakeholders. They don't want to know all the details about your users, yeah? They want to know the essence, the specific information that will help them to make the correct decision. So you can create one more version of your persona to help you achieve your goals. And uh, that's okay to have several versions of the same personas, uh, but, but always keep in mind your goals. Never try to use selling personas for radiation sessions. Yeah, this will not help. You will fail. Everyone will be disappointed in personas. So this is common reason for, for personas failure from my experience. I mean, uh, trying to use the same picture for different purposes. So uh, just a quick question for you. Have you ever tried to create different versions of the same personas? So for example, you found that uh, you have a persona called Ben and you have different versions of this persona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not so many people try to create different versions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So the truth here is that there is no, the only one structure for personas, yeah? You can add different blocks to your personas. You can add different, uh, you can emphasize different aspects of your target audience, keeping in mind your goal. Uh, yes, there are some basic blocks based on the type of persona. I mean, marketing or design of product personas, but you can add different details to your personas based on your needs. So uh, probably the last part for today, I know tons of examples when teams didn't know what to do with personas. I mean, they built personas, but they were sure that situation will somehow magically improve. They thought that personas is like a magic wand. Uh, and all you need is a, is a magical spell, yeah. But that always leads to failure. When you don't know how to use personas, how to activate them after creation, personas will, will end up keeping dust on the shelf. There, there is no magic, yeah. So personas don't have an autopilot. You have to know how to drive them, yeah. So uh, actually, Teams spend a great deal of time and effort creating personas and then stick up some, some persona posters like this picture in the office with the expectation that suddenly the whole organization will start talking about the users. I'm not saying that doing this isn't a great idea. It, it usually is, uh, but there is, there is so much more that you can do with your personas uh, than just creating some nice posters to help brighten up the, 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 the office here. Yeah. So with this in mind, here are some ways that you put your personas that, to work in your, your projects. Yeah. So 
as we discussed before, you can use personas to share your research findings. I mean, you conducted some research, you conducted some interviews, uh, organized some surveys, and some observations, so on and so forth, and you can share these uh, all findings uh, from this research in the, in the form of personas. Uh, but don't just share a link to your personas or put posters on a wall, yeah? So you should hold a meeting or a workshop to put everyone on the same page, or you should organize a meeting with all teams, departments, clients, influencing these personas and facilitate discussions uh, of key findings, yeah. You can also use personas as a focal point for ideation sessions. Uh, use personas for every brainstorming session, uh, which influences your users. You can ask everyone to focus on your personas. For example, what would you persona want to be able to do? What features would, we, would be important to her? What would she really love? Yeah. Mm. Personas can not only provide a, let's say, focal point for radiation sessions, but uh, also help to en ensure that everyone considers a problem from the user's perspective. Yeah, probably that's the most important part. Uh, you can also <clears throat> review your service, product, or a part of it with the help of personas. For example, for example, you have an onboarding email campaign within your service. Let's imagine that. And you can validate if all your emails are suitable for your personas or what you will need to add or how you can make them more personal. Uh, here's an example from our own experience here at Expression. After, after, creating, after creation of these personas, first of all, we checked all our emails uh, in our email onboarding campaign from user's perspective. And we constantly um, use personas to validate every changes in our onboarding email campaign. Here you can see our founder reading one of our email to a specific persona. I hope he will not know that I show this photo during this talk. Um, so um, you can use, you can also use personas as an as an assistant in selling some some ideas to your boss, stakeholders, or clients. You can use them to strengthen your ideas, to connect your uh, proposal and your users. Yeah, and also you can use personas as a starting point for usage scenarios. For example, how will our persona use the product? How, when, where, and why will she be using the product? Yeah, rather than picking scenarios out of thin air, personas uh, provide a great starting point for your user scenarios. And you can also use personas for uh, so-called usability reviews. Uh, so scenario-based usability reviews provide uh, a structured way to examine uh, the usability of an existing product, service, or even an idea by evaluating it against the potential usage scenario. For example, would a user be able to find and buy this sort of bike, for example, he or she might be looking for a given the, the current product. So scenario-based usability reviews are a great way to critique a design from a usability perspective. And personas uh, also help you to think about how it design of your product or service might perform the real world. And the last but not the least, yeah, personas can be used as a as a main characters for journey maps. It's really hard and probably a waste of time to map some, let's say, generic journey for all of your users. Because yeah? each persona can have her own journey. Sometimes these journeys differ much, yeah. Personas provide a great starting point for thinking about these sorts of journeys to map out and uh, and the sort of stories to illustrate. So why it is so important to know how to use personas? Uh, I believe that a failed persona effort is often the largest barrier to future success. Those who have seen them fall by the wayside without having any meaningful 
meaningful impact on the project, often write them write them off as a let's say silly waste of time. Yeah, for the rest of eternity, and you will have to work hard to convince these skeptics that personas are valuable. So the truth here is that you must use personas to see the impact on your product or service. There is no magic behind personas. The fact that you build personas uh, will not help you to, to, to improve your service or uh, to, to make your team always think about personas. This is just the, the first step in the journey. Yeah? So you must know how to use personas, not just create personas. So let's quickly recap what we discussed today. So first of all, you must understand the reason behind your persona, personas initiative. Uh, keep in mind that you can have different set of personas for different scopes. Don't try to put a square peg in a round hole. Yeah? Uh, the need for, for personas should be situational. Yeah? So next, uh, keep in mind that you must somehow split your target audience. So there are several different techniques for user segmentation and selected technique defines the type of personas. Next, uh, it's, it's okay to create personas before any research based on your assumptions, but never call them real personas. Yeah, they are product personas or bullshit personas. Uh, so next, it's okay to have different, let's say, visual representations for the same, of the same personas. Yeah? So based on your needs, you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can tune the level of details and focus your personas. And the last one, don't put personas on the shelf or on the wall, hoping this will magically improve your product or service. So the fact that you have personas means only that you have them, yeah. So you must somehow activate and use personas to see the impact on your product or service. So now I want to share your plans regarding personas. So please complete this statement. Tomorrow I will. And uh, write, write uh, the number in our chat. What will you do tomorrow regarding personas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the most popular answers right now are use personas in some other way and try to create one more version of existing personas, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, thanks a lot for your patient and activity today. I was glad to share my experience and thoughts on personas. Hope this will help you with your next personas initiatives. Yeah, Nick, thank you so much for such an insightful talk. So many different things mentioned, so many unmentioned. Hopefully we'll cover them uh, with the questions we now um, get. So let me start from the very beginning. Uh, the first question was, uh, can you please explain what does it mean for a persona to be situational? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ed, just a, just... Just a sec, I will open the corresponding slide and try to describe this statement. Mm -hmm. So uh, what does that mean? Uh, at the beginning of this talk, I told you that um, personas yeah, can have different scope, a broad and a narrow one. Yeah. So uh, like in this example, uh, there is an let's say a financial company, yeah, which has many different digital and non-digital services and products for their customers. And you can have, you can create, you can build completely different sets of personas for different goals. And situational means that, for example, if you want to redesign your 
mobile app uh, if you work inside this large financial company you will need to create a separate set of personas uh, separate i mean com comparing to the global persona set if you have one uh, like mm, this persona set can can help you to describe the companies yeah customers uh, but if you want to redesign your mobile app you must think of a different yeah, set of personas so uh, you don't have to have personas at each level of this hierarchy yeah uh, you can have a different set of personas at each of these levels yeah to to to, to influence the, the the decision decisions making at that level but uh, you don't have to have personas at each level so if you need to to, to do something if you have a specific goal in mind to redesign a mobile app to redesign an onboarding experience of your customers to uh, redesign some specific scenario yeah you will need to uh, create probably you will need to create a separate set of personas that what i meant i hope you i answer the question I think you did. Let us know in the chat. <laughs> uh, so the, another question, uh, Sama asks, can you use your personas to measure, validate, or benchmark your success goals during usability testing sessions or post product launch with your customers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually great questions. Great question. Um, I mentioned that you can use personas as a source for your so-called usability reviews but at the same time you can use uh, personas to prepare for usability testing sessions yeah first of all you can uh, use personas to first of all understand what users you will need yeah so uh, what users you must focus on uh, re respondents yeah and uh, as some uh, uh, asked yes you can measure yeah the your success goals during this testing because first of all you know what goals your persona has yeah what what does she need what is she, what are her pain points and so on and so forth so you can just 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 matter measure uh is your product uh can be can be successful can help your persona to achieve her goals or to overcome some barriers or problems that this persona have. So during these usability sessions, uh, yeah, you can you can use you can definitely use personas to to, to measure measure the, the the let's say the the metrics of usability, the 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 the, the, the user experience and so on. Mm -hmm. Great, Nick, thank you. Another question comes from Martin, and Martin asks, how can we get deep insights from personas in order to trigger them in future? How can we deep insights from personas in order to trigger them in future? Uh, so, first of all, yeah, mm, uh, you, when you uh, when you have an intention to create a persona, yeah, you always, mm, I think, yeah, you always have uh, a specific goal. And from my point of view, uh, you can have a goal like I want to understand our customers because I just don't know, I know nothing about these customers. So the second uh, uh, the second uh, goal can be I want to improve something. So I see some signals from our customers that something is broken uh, in our product or service. So I want to understand uh, our customers so that I can improve something that is broken. And the, the last type of initiative uh, can be, I want to launch something new. So how can we use personas uh, within these initiatives to gather some insights yeah so for example uh if we have an improve initiative yeah uh the the i think it's it's mo the most obvious one because uh if we uh, want to improve something yeah we, we we need to understand what is broken and how this broken 
part of our product or service uh, influences our person. I mean, you know, yeah, so persona mm, contains several major and main blocks like goals, pain points, motivations, something like that. And uh, you, you can compare yeah, your existing version of, of your product or service to, 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 their, to their needs. And you can ask your, yourself questions uh, like, uh, can our current version of our product or service help this persona to achieve her goals, for example? Or what can we do to uh, help her to overcome some, some problems? And uh, you can always bring your personas uh, with, with you uh, for, for every meeting, for example. And uh, for example, if someone from your team or some, some stakeholder or a client tells you that, I have a great idea, let's, let's add this super feature to our product or let's improve our service in this way. So you can use persona as a, as a filter, yeah? Uh, you can ask your teammate like, uh, how this great idea will help this specific persona to, to reach her goals or to overcome some pain points or barriers she, she has right now. So uh, that's for, for, for the improve uh, initiative. If we uh, have an understand um, a type of initiative, I, I call uh, understand. Uh, so in this case, uh, how can you use personas of, so to, to the, the main, the main goal here is uh, to spread the, the knowledge of the, the of your users across your team or across your organization. So uh, to to get deep insights from from personas in this case uh, is to share this knowledge. Yeah, I told you that uh, one of the uh, one of the way that you can you know, how you can use persona uh, personas is uh, to share your research findings and uh, you can bring uh, your research, yeah, results of your research, uh, transform these results in, in the form of personas to, uh, to help your team, to help your stakeholders, uh, let's say, easily understand the results of research. So instead of uh, telling that we have a lot of, lo lots of different uh, customers, they are so different, blah, 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 you can, say that we have this segment and the, the typical representative uh, is, is, is Ben, for example, or Sasha or something like that. And you can also uh, ask them to, to, to discuss how our product fits in, or service fits in, in her or his life, I mean, our persona's life. Uh, I don't know uh, if I answer these questions because I think it's rather rather deep and uh, broad question. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Yuda, can you help me? Uh, do we have e some some? Yeah, Martin, let us know in the chat, please. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> just to yeah. understand, yeah, if uh, Nick has answered your question. Yeah, uh, for now, I guess we can uh, move on. Maybe, Martin, two more seconds mm -hmm. <laughs> to give yeah. some sort let, of let, feedback. Let, let's wait for the Martin mm -hmm. yeah, feedback. Just to make sure. Okay, I don't see any reaction from Martin. Martin, let us know in the chat if you uh, haven't received uh, the answer. So we have a couple more questions mm -hmm. that are focused around uh, multiple versions of the same persona you mentioned before. Uh, so mm -hmm. the question from Alvin goes like this, uh, what are some more examples of the multiple versions of the same persona? Can you share? Or oh, it's okay for Martin. So yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Martin. <laughs> so, uh, let me quickly switch slides. Mm -hmm. Just a sec. So uh, what I meant when I was talking about different versions uh, of the same persona. 
So, uh, for example, you have a specific goal in mind. For example, you want to, let's say, redesign this mobile app. Yeah? And you conducted some research, you found some interesting uh, insights about your users, and you want to share your research findings with your team or stakeholders or some, someone else in the form of personas. So you have uh, your segment here, yeah, your cluster. You describe this cluster in the form of persona. You are trying to find a typical fictional yet uh, mm, Okay, some some uh, fictional uh, representative, yeah. And uh, you, uh, I think that during these sessions, uh, you will need to focus on details. So your persona, uh, let, let it be a uh, Julia, yeah. So this persona, Julia, will have uh, a lot of details because uh, you want to share your research findings. That that will be our uh, the, the first version of our persona, Julia, yeah? We still have this persona, we still have this cluster, we still have this segment. And we also want to improve something or to come up with some ideas on how we can improve our service, yeah? So we can use this persona, Julia, for ideation sessions. And we can somehow uh, modify the our initial um, initial version of Julia. Uh, we can uh, throw away some details, or we can uh, focus on some specific blocks that should help us to to come up with an ideas. For example, we can uh, put emphasis on um, context or for behavior or something like that. So this will be the second version of our persona, of Yule. Uh, we 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 also uh, maybe we we want to keep our personas uh, during this redesign process. I think this, this is a long-term project to redesign the mobile app. And you want to take them always with you for, 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 for any meeting that you have with your team about um, how we can redesign this mobile app. So you can uh, create the third version of this persona, uh, a short version. So you don't need all these details uh, during each meeting with your team, because probably your team uh, re remembers, yeah, they, 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 they did all the details. But you need to 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 facilitate these discussions. You need to put some emphasis, to put focus on some specific uh, personas. For example, as as I told you before, someone can tell you, I, I, I have a great idea. Yeah, you can ask how this great idea can help this specific persona to reach the, her goal, yeah? And that can be the third version of persona and so on. For example, you, uh, you came up with the idea on how you can redesign this mobile app and you, your, your, next, your next task is to sell, sell all these um, ideas yeah, to, to your boss or to your client. And uh, you want to somehow strengthen your your proposal. Yeah, you want to somehow uh, uh, describe uh, who we are designing for, who we are redesigning this mobile app for, and your stakeholders, your uh, boss or someone else, uh, probably they they don't want all these details about the the personas yeah they probably want the the essence some specific information that will help them to 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 make some business decisions yeah so you can create for the same persona julia uh, the fourth version uh, which will have let's say uh, which will uh, be in this in the form of of dion yeah like this so Here's an example. Uh, we can create different versions for, for, for the same persona. That can be uh, in, the, in the right corner, yeah? Uh, that can be a, uh, a persona that you can use uh, as a representative of your research, some, some research findings, yeah? And you can use this type of, this, this visual representation of your persona uh, during some ideation sessions. 
uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, here is an example of the shorter version, uh, version of personas that you can take these, let's say, cards uh, every time with you for every meeting, yeah? And you have the, the essence, the, 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 the most important information about this, this, this persona uh, with you. And if you want to, to sell your idea, for example, to, to other stakeholders, you can create another version, uh, which is in the left corner, that can be, that can contain the same information, yes, but uh, in other visual form. Uh, did I answer this question? So, Elvin, could you please elaborate on that? Yeah, it says Elvin has already <laughs> thanked you for this, such a detailed ah. response. <laughs> yeah, so thanks, Nick. Um, another one, we have two more left. Uh, mm -hmm. We're kind of it over time, guys, so bear with us just for a few more minutes. Um, so you mentioned a couple of versions of Julia. So just to confirm, Nadia asked before, how do you name a different version of a persona? So if a persona is called John or Julia in your example, mm -hmm. would you keep the same name for another version? Yeah, you will. Uh, you will keep the, the same name for another version. Th this will. This still will be John. Yeah, but uh, you will represent. You will uh, present your John in another way. That's that's the main idea. Okay, so great, to to you. use the proper type of presentation for for your specific goal. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. And uh, the last question we have is from Juliana. Uh, so, is it a good idea to start making personas before any other part of research? Uh, <laughs> that's uh, okay. Now, let, let me answer this way. Yeah, you can create personas. Yeah, you can make persona before uh, any kind of research. You can make them based on your assumptions, but there are uh, there, there are two main uh, rules that you must always remember. First of all, don't call them real personas. Uh, call them proto personas, bullshit personas, uh, and all lean personas, something like that. Because these are your hallucinations. How these proto personas can help you? Uh, they can help you to prepare for this research. So before uh, before conducting any interviews, yeah, before uh, conducting any surveys, uh, you must somehow prepare for this interview. Yeah, you must understand what questions to ask, uh, what uh, information you you are looking for, and this first uh, draft of personas can help you to understand what to ask. Also, you can use these product personas uh, as a as a as a kickoff workshop with your team to gather uh, some insights about your target audience. For example, you, you, you know nothing about your target audience or you know just a little bit about your personas. You, you know that someone from your company uh, knows more like sales representatives, yeah, or uh, marketing specialists and so on and so forth. You can gather them and conduct a simple workshop and create a proto personas during this workshop because they are all based on assumptions. Uh, and I mentioned the first rule, call them proto personas, make them as draft, as sketch uh, as possible. Yeah? Don't try to add some uh, pretty photo and don't make some uh, nice visualization for these personas. Because the second rule, you must throw away these personas after conducting the research, or you must always look at them and uh, understand that these are only your hallucinations. Yeah, these, these are only your assumptions. So yes, you can uh, create personas, but there are, oh, there are two rules. Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you still here? Don't forget to check out the Expression Academy at academy.expression.com and explore our courses. 
get professional skills and a few hours of practice and a certificate upon completion to prove that. Self-paced approach, interactive conversation-based format. What are you waiting for? See you at the Academy.